This is me. Well, not exactly. Technically, this is me. But this was me about six years ago. Bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, straight out of high school, and ready to do absolutely anything. Or nothing. In all honesty, I had applied to and was accepted at the Wright State University in their creative writing program, but about halfway through the summer I said, never mind, I don't want to go to college. So I decided to take a year off and reevaluate. This is me reevaluating. It also happened to be the same year my dad was hired as a technical theater director of a new college theater program at Xavier University. It was very exciting to watch him get new opportunities at a school I know he had a lot of family history with. Well, one thing led to another, and Joe showed the director of a program this video. And I got a text message asking if I had any interest in coming to Xavier for theater performance. Little did I know, my parents and Steven were at Arthur's when I got that text scheming together. Well, it worked. As he does whenever he's courting a new student, Stephen invited me in for a conversation about the possibility of me attending. Now I wanted to be known that just like I had never stepped foot on Wright State's campus while I was prepared to go there, the only tour I got of Xavier's campus was a quick walk around the quad and back inside the building I would be spending most of my time in, Gallagher Student Center. I never once talked to an admissions person. I did, however, talk to Stephen Skiles all about my wants and goals in college, and I remember a lot of the time because he won't let me forget it. He probably even introduced me with this story just now before I press play. When Steven sat me down and asked me, what is it you want out of your college theater experience? I was caught off guard, mostly because I'd never thought about doing theater in college before, but also because I didn't think my answer could be anything more than what I want out of life in general. I said, I just want friends. That's all I really did want. Because coming from a high school where I ate lunch alone on the floor in the corner of the lunchroom, close and real friends would be a big step up. Well, fulfilling that wish didn't take long because a few months later, starting with the second show that year, This Is Our Youth, directed by Ed Stern, I started to help out at productions and with Strike, because teaching swim lessons isn't really an all-consuming job. All that culminated in me getting a crew position on Xavier's production of Rent, my first role in a college show and I hadn't even had orientation yet. I was off to a great start. I had the opportunity during that process to meet a lot of people who would go on to become incredible friends to me throughout most of my years at Xavier. But it all started there, with a text message from Steven Skiles saying, Hey, we should talk. That was the spring. Then came the fall, when my freshman year actually started off with a bang when I was offered the opportunity to play a pretty major character in my first college show. Deanne Brill and Ed Cohen were directing our production of The Music Man, and they wanted to cast me as Mayor Shin, the resident blowhard of River City, Iowa. The opportunity was awesome as a first semester freshman, but some personal problems I was going through were playing a pretty big role in that process. I thought to myself before accepting the role, why not look at this as an opportunity to close the door on that problem forever? So I moved forward with that idea in my head to varying degrees of success. Looking back, I don't know if I was able to move completely past that part of my life, but I know that it never came close to affecting any more than my comfort level in the room. My work still came through. Now, the quality of that work as a first semester freshman? That's still up in the air. But I know that because of this experience, I was put in a difficult position that working through helped me understand how important it is to respect my own personal experience, but not let it be detrimental to my work and the part that I play in any production. That is something I know I will carry with me throughout my life. Another thing that came from that first semester was a small answer to that initial wish I offered up to Steven. I felt like I was thriving. I was chill with the upperclassmen since I was there for rent, and I felt at home with my own class, so I never fully felt out of place. I was really starting to feel at home, like I had found a place where I belonged. And for that reason, I honestly feel like I've always been pretty chill when it comes to auditions. Because for me, I was comfortable because I knew I had people around me that would be there. So what did I have to worry about? So when we got notification that our audition requirements for our second round of auditions changed about 16 hours before the actual audition, I was never quite as scared and anxious as everyone around me seemed to be. But then again, to quote Sam Martini, 
how could I be scared to audition for a man who doesn't know how to chicken dance? Don't ask, don't ask. That semester was when I got my opportunity to work on Shakespeare for the first time. And God, did I fall in love with it. The idea of a medium that is universally known, but you can still inject yourself into and bring your own purpose and ideas to make it more fresh with every interpretation was intoxicating to me. On top of that, working with people like Craig Wesley DeVino and Kathleen Wise, who brought such an energy and respect to the room, not to mention their craft, was unbelievable. What they gave me, though, was an unending appreciation for the smaller roles in theater. I was cast as the Gravedigger, a role that I was only a little bit familiar, but it was served to me as the moment of Hamlet's change of heart. The only common character who came anywhere close to Hamlet's own genius. Craig taught me that even though the Gravedigger was one scene, one speech, the play wouldn't work without him. That proved to be just as important when I was cast as the mysterious man in Into the Woods. The one thing that stuck out to me about Lynn Meyer's directing style was a collective importance. I caught on quickly because that same importance was preached in the room with Hamlet. People like to mock the line, no small parts, only small actors, but that was basically the watered down version of what Lynn gave us. Being a casting director, she kind of has a first round decision when it comes to what is important in any show when it comes to the actors. Having these two experiences where I was reminded of the importance of every role, I believe strengthened my ability and appreciation as an artist and helped lay an incredible foundation for the work in the four years that followed. Sadly, at the end of my freshman year, I lost a really close friend of mine when he decided to not return. But almost as a replacement, sophomore year was the first year I lived at Marion and the first year that I had with my fellow seniors that I'm graduating with this year. Both memories worth being cherished for very different reasons. It also brought a patch of shows that I was incredibly excited for, and I had the good fortune to get to work on just about every single one that year. I got in touch with my technician heritage, with Cannibal Galaxy, as a part of the run crew we happily called Gaines Crew. I designed projections for the Laramie Project, and I was on the difficult job of props crew for Ed Stern. Realism in an Ed Stern show is as difficult as it is rewarding, with one of my favorite memories being driving around three hours to pick up the couch that was used in Buried Child. It felt good to be able to contribute something to a show that I wasn't used to, and being in the room with Ed to hear him tell stories was gratifying enough as itself. It was an opportunity I didn't take lightly, and gratefully got to experience again the following year. On stage was equally as exciting as I took a turn as the ever-inebriated Grandmaster Chad, employing, I think, Steven's favorite blocking of all time when I shouldered a keg out on stage before asking Elle what it is she really wanted. In a last-minute change, I also got to play the nervous assistant lawyer representing the Wyndham Estate. That came after we were about a week before tech and Steven realized my last entrance had been as the MAGA hat-wearing scumbag who stole Paulette's dog in Act 1. Honestly though, even though the work was difficult and having never been in a show that big before, I was a bit overwhelmed. I felt like I was able to put that stress into practice and use it as motivation to explore freedoms within my characters and enjoy the bits that I got when I got them. I also learned how to not take things too far with our favorite nervous lawyer Damian Wayne, as I towed the line quite often. Nowadays, whenever I think about doing something I know wouldn't fly, I remember how it worked with the lawyer. The following semester, I was casting Cabaret as Herr Schultz, rather than one of my all-time favorite musicals, Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. I was disappointed at first because I was incredibly proud of my audition for Jackson, but it didn't work out. Or so I thought. I got a call at 10 in the morning the day we got back from vacation saying, Hey, would you be willing to understudy Seth Mobley as the band leader? He was out sick, so I got ready as quick as I could and made my way to rehearsal. What followed was an incredible example of how hard work and commitment to a show can pay off. Being at every single rehearsal, lending the knowledge I had of the show and of the genre of music was honestly exhilarating. I looked forward to rehearsal every day because I got to work on one of my favorite shows in the world. Eventually, Steven surprised me, and he and Scott had decided to add me to the cast. I was incredibly grateful, but more so, I saw it as a working example of how your work can get you places. I'm still so proud of that process and that show. It holds a special place in my heart. And likewise, even though I didn't expect it, being a part of Cabaret was also rewarding. 
but that reward came from gaining an appreciation for a show I had previously cast aside. I wasn't terribly drawn to Cabaret, I had very little interest before being a part of it, mostly because I was unfamiliar. I'm lucky my opinion was changed though, because Cabaret proved to be an incredible story. Playing Herr Schultz was one of the easiest and hardest things I have ever done. Easiest because as I have been told, kind old man is my top tier type. Hard because I knew I was holding a long history of injustice on my shoulders and didn't want to screw that up. Schultz was the embodiment of hope in that show and I knew I had to take that seriously. Like Pandora's box, it was my job to dangle that hope over the audience without lavishing in it. Being that piece in Cabaret was both tragic and life-affirming. And I believe that since then, my empathy as an artist has grown tenfold. The struggle, though, that semester proved to be real. I've never been the greatest academic, but school was an especial burden that weighed on me that spring. I've never been great at balance, and throwing myself into two pretty involved processes took a tool on my schoolwork, regular life, and mental health. I poured myself into those shows, and I'm, I'm proud of the work I did, don't get me wrong, but it affected me in a pretty bad way with a big reason that was my unhealthy relationship with time. That summer, my mental health hit an all-time low. I couldn't figure out how to deal with the darkness I was dealing with during Music Man, and I'd added a great deal onto that over the next year with the loss of quite a few people I cared about. However, it was at that lowest moment that I finally reached out, called out for help, and I was overwhelmed with the love I received. I looked at myself and realized that my story wasn't over. I had a life that was worth living, and I found that while I struggled holding on to that wish I made as an 18-year-old graduate, the wish itself hadn't left. I had just lost sight. I was still surrounded by people who cared. Though that summer was the worst I had been in a long time, I came out of it and launched into a new year with an invigorated sense of determination and purpose that I had nearly lost before. I took that fervor with me into August with the start of a now even more prescient production of Mr. Birds. This was a big one. Of all the growth I have had at Xavier, I feel like this one takes the cake. Burns was a transformative process for me. The opening act is just storytelling around the fire, and for the most part, Kelsey Schwarber and I didn't shut our mouths. I have never been the greatest at memorizing lines. Just ask anyone who's taken my line notes before and they will tell you with a sigh. So this was the biggest undertaking I'd worked on. I would come to rehearsal about 30 minutes early to practice my lines just so I could get them through my head, since I spent my summer in my head rather than my script. But the work was worth it. The show felt to me the way Jackson did. The collaboration was unreal. Steven made the room feel like everyone's name was carved into the table. Every one of us deserved the part we were given, and when my ego got in the way and I clashed with something, it took me a moment to realize I didn't need to look at anything in my life as a combat. I was not against anything. I was part of a team. I made some pretty incredible friends in that process, and I thank God I was on the rise from the summer, because had I not had that breaking down moment, I don't believe I would have had the moment I did to soar. I felt like my work was right there with everyone else's, and no one had to tell me it was right for me to feel that. And then I got to work with Ed again, but this time as an actor. Since I started, one of the highlights of every year was having conversations with him. It was drilled into our heads that he was probably the most important person we would get the opportunity to work with while at Xavier, and I didn't take that lightly. So since my freshman year, I would take any chance I had to make conversation with him from what plays we were reading to our shared appreciation of Spongebob the Musical. Yes, really. Ed thinks Spongebob the Musical is better than Waitress. <laughs> the closest we got up to that point was during Buried Child, where we would talk about Cabaret and his opinions on a lot of the productions Broadway's had. But now I got to be his actor. He cast me as Tiresias in Griff Bloodworth's adaptation of Antigone, an incredibly relevant story, and I felt as if I had the opportunity to share that. Having the president we had, the things Tiresias got to say to Creon, were incredibly cathartic. Getting to develop a character like that with Ed was incredible, and an experience I don't think I'll ever forget. Ed gave me perspective I don't think I'd ever gotten on theater before. For most of my time in it, it had been as though the artistry was about embellishing life and making things more than real. But he took it as just what the text says. You don't need to spend time trying to explain something away when it is right there in front of you. 
Now, that isn't to say Ed didn't care about spectacle. He wheeled in a couple hundred gallons of dirt to pack the stage for that show. But he taught me that sometimes the little choices, the littlest details, like a laugh after an insult, or a twinge of sadness in an angry voice, can make all the difference in a performance. I believe it did. I think Tiresias is the role I'm most proud of, and one that I will look back on, thinking of the work I did, rather than just the outcome. Part of that, though, is because it was Ed's final show. After our second semester started, Ed got really sick again and finally passed. It breaks my heart, but I know he lived an incredible life, and he made an impact on my life just as he did so many people. For that, I'm eternally grateful. That being said, I was also hurting because the final conversation I had with him was over coffee, about his production of Company, and how excited he was to see my take on Robert. This was probably the most unexpected part of my journey here at Xavier. When we auditioned for Company, I never once expected to be handed what I was. In fact, I had my eyes set on another show that semester, Next to Normal. Dan and Next to Normal has always been a dream role of mine, and I was very excited at the prospect of auditioning. I had prepared my audition way ahead of time, and was working on possible callback material for a while, hoping that I would do my best in that room. Well, there were other plans for me but I will de not deny that I had the best round of auditions I ever had that semester. I felt unbelievably proud of every one of them and got good remarks from all, but the day those lists came out, I couldn't believe that I'd been drafted to play Robert. Every year, Steven talks type with the freshmen, and when he did with us, no vocabulary ever came close to mentioning that I would be a quote-unquote leading man, but here I was. I don't know if I was ready. I sure didn't think I was. But the chance to work with Pam Myers was not something I was going to take lightly. I took this opportunity and ran with it. If you compare my second semester sophomore year and my second semester junior year, it was like night and day. I had more confidence. I was taking more chances, doing things I don't think I ever would have done normally. But through all that, I felt I was able to take back control over my life. The control that I had lost a year before. It felt like it was back. And I was turning my struggles around. With the help of some good and crazy people, I look at company and I see a happy me doing what I love with people I love. And I know that even though he was gone, Ed was there with me. Junior year was definitely a year to be proud of. Now, when I talk about senior year, I'm going to be referring to it in the Harry Potter way. There's a part one and there's a part two. Because of my struggles in school, I managed to land myself a second year of senior status, and I get to graduate this year. Peyton says it's a victory lap, but it sure feels like I've just been running for too damn long. We started off the semester with some incredible accent work in Curious Incident. As you can see, this was a tight-knit process that I felt proved to me that the friendships and relationships I had been building for the past four years up to that point help in a great number of ways. There was a certain level of mastery I felt we had because of how we were all on the same wavelength. And synergy was key as well, because for the voices in that show, we were all playing a great number of characters, and for the most part took the stage for a vast majority of the show acting as Christopher's thoughts and interactions, extensions of his, which helps if we are all on the same level. What I took away, though, was that I still had a level of uncertainty about my place, however small. I was still struggling understanding myself and whether or not I was appreciated. I was part of this amazing group, and yet I was still doubting my place at the table. Well, yes, I know I had come to a huge epiphany the year prior. I was realizing I'd have to come back for another year and feeling completely lost again in the place that I knew was my home. Curious Incident helped, but I was moving into a difficult time for myself. And through that, I don't think I was treating myself correctly either. That led to a pivotal conversation I had with Steven. I knew I was struggling a lot with how I was feeling, and a lot of that felt to be a fear of confrontation. I didn't want to talk to anybody when I felt like I wasn't right in what I was saying. I realized that a lot of that came from the same negative interactions I had, some all the way back to freshman year, and I wanted to talk to Steven about it, but for the same reason I feared stepping out and assuming I had people in my corner, I relented and was reluctant to do so, 
Even with my positive change the year before, I was still holding myself back from truly moving forward as an artist and as a human being by recognizing that those things that were in my past were truly past. So by the time I got around to talking to Steven, I was stewing. By my own hand, I was dwelling on all what I had felt had been done to me and not thinking about how I could grow from it. I was letting it affect a great part of my life. Luckily, though, Stephen got through to me. He showed me that this isn't just an isolated incident, that people struggle with this stuff all the time. But the truly remarkable moment is when they choose to move on. I wasn't fighting this alone. They choose to trust the people around them to be there for them and help them through. The same epiphany I had come to a year before. But hearing it from someone else meant something a little different. No, it isn't all daisies, but it's a path to healing. It's a way you can cope with those moments. Use them to make you stronger by drawing on the strength of those close to us. It was exactly what I needed to hear. Because I realized that I could use it. I didn't need to be defined. The young version of me that was cast in The Music Man could finally have a moment of peace because I understood that it was not what defined me. It was a moment that helped make me who I am today. My dad's always said the greatest stories pass through us. And when you can add your own personal experience into a role, into anything you do, that's when you can truly tell something great. I now realize that having these moments do nothing but aid me in doing it. The darkness is nothing more than the paper that I'm writing my story on. It's not everything. And to finish out that short year, I had the opportunity to play the gayest of dead gay dads in Heathers. It almost felt like the pinnacle of processes for me. I think I felt more comfortable to be myself. Felt more confident in my choices in the show and being a leader in the room. I spent less time doubting myself because I realized I didn't have anything to prove. It felt really good and incredibly rewarding. Also, I got to kiss Elliot, and that was definitely worth it. But then, as we were preparing for American Idiot, COVID hit. And I don't really need to get into it because we've all suffered, but it took a toll on us. I wasn't safe from it either. But it did lead me to the opportunity I get to share with you today. So keep seated as this guy hands it off to this guy. 